Security Council meeting, Soviet delegate Yakub Malik welcomes the Communist China mission led by General Wu, and there too is Andrei Vyshinsky. Invited by the United Nations, Red China is to state her case against America over Formosa. But America raises a more urgent problem, Korea. Can the representative tell us how many Chinese communist troops have entered Korea? And are there now? Does the representative still maintain that these forces are composed only of volunteers? The United Nations has made it clear that once order has been restored, all forces will be withdrawn from Korea. Will the authorities at Peking heed this judgment of the United Nations? Or will they defy the United Nations? Will there be peace? A war in the Far East. China's intervention is an attack on the United Nations. But in a fiery speech, General Wu ignores the issue and hopes of a speedy solution fade. To other nations, the Far East is read as a diversion. They see danger in Europe. And with the support of all parties, Mr. Attlee will discuss the crisis with President Truman, whose reference to the atom bomb was misunderstood. In Korea, MacArthur is welcomed by his commander in the field, General Walton Walker, as United Nations forces fall back before the attack of 200,000 Chinese. Until a new line can be set up, the situation in Korea is critical. But, MacArthur says, the atom bomb won't be needed. In the thick of it is the Commonwealth 27th Brigade. Now they're filling a dangerous breach in the line. It's bitter winter in Korea now. Fun for the children as the Argyle sentry keeps watch. But the ice which hampers our transports helps the Chinese troops to stream across the Yalu River. Warm clothing now available makes the troops more comfortable and the people are friendly. If they remember the old places, it's because they realize that's where the real danger is. It's cold in Korea. It's cold in the West. But now is the time for cold thinking with warm understanding. <laughs> <laughs>